upcycled this antique cabinet we got off of Facebook Marketplace. I have to say, I am really happy with the results. Um, we basically took a beeswax finish we made from home and went that across the interior wood panels of the inside of the cabinet to kind of make a moisture resistant barrier between the air in the cabinet and the wood itself because the cabinet would actually have higher humidity and I thought it would be a really good idea to share my review. I would definitely recommend it for a few different reasons. The first one being is that you're providing it a perfectly controlled environment with respect to humidity, airflow, light, temperature. It also helps protect against pests and predators. If you haven't seen any of our other videos, we definitely battle uh, predators, especially when you consider our little toddler that is a garden enthusiast and wants to help with everything and sometimes the seedlings just can't stand the test of her strength. I feel that the cabinet also does help elevate the feng shui of the room as it really pulls from my design aesthetic and brings in an extra razzle dazzle to this room. And I also feel that upcycling an antique cabinet is super awesome because you're giving life to a piece of furniture that might have already seen the best of its days and really turning it into something new and innovative and unique to only you because more than likely there won't be another cabinet like that. Welcome to my upcycled antique cabinet tour and review, where we welcome crystals, analog hygrometers, and plant babies. My name is Marissa, and I will be your guide. In our first video about this cabinet, I was using casserole dishes, and I stood by my decision to use them in the cabinet until it was time to make a lasagna and I realized I needed them back. I replaced them with bootstrap farmer trays and I have to say, I'm super impressed with the quality. You can tell they're durable and heavy duty. I really love these basic lights for the cabinet. Because it's so small, there's limited real estate and I appreciate their paper thin design. This is the first level shelf. In the front row, left to right, I have a Hoya Abovada Splash, Philodendron Pedatum, and a Hoya Carnosa Crinkle. My ladies in the back include a Philodendron Prince of Orange, Philodendron Moonlight, and a Philodendron Super Dwarf Red. This guy came with the cabinet and I truly feel he's the wise guardian of not only the cabinet, but now the room. Not sure of his origin story, but he's definitely a keeper. Next, we have seedlings destined for our outdoor garden. Kale, Swiss chard, marigolds, calendula, echinacea, and nasturtium are some of the varieties that we'll hopefully be harvesting this fall and winter. On the third shelf, I have a Satin Pothos Variegated Hoya Carii, Philodendron Mykins, and a Moonlight Trebui. I think I said that right. This beautiful jade piece also came with the cabinet and it's two carved goldfish. The seller had absolutely no clue to what we do. It's just fate that we have this piece as a part of our aquaponic story. On every other shelf, we also have a fan. This is to help the plants, soil, and roots breathe thanks to air circulation. It also helps with things like mold prevention and disease management too. 
The last and final level has a fan, an African violet, and a sustainable prop box made from a grocery store lettuce container. I let the overall humidity in the cabinet fluctuate between 40 and 80% with a perfect range between 60 and 70%. If you're doing something similar to this and want to have a higher humidity, then I recommend to use some kind of container or cloche to raise the levels. Having constant water, especially high humidity, will damage the wood um, of your unit even if you use the beeswax finish like we did. This is what it looks like when water sits on the wood with the wax. Keep in mind the wax is a natural barrier, but it only goes so far when water is actually sitting on the wood for periods of time. So after setting up this cabinet, I have to say that pretty much all our seeds for our indoor or outdoor garden are now sprouted in the greenhouse, then transferred out to either the aquaponic grow bed or hardened off and planted in a raised bed outside. We use fish tank water to water pretty much everything in our house. And now that the seedlings are grown, we will fortify the fish tank water with our house recipe, which we call our plant tonic. Whenever something is watered in the cabinet, the humidity always increases. After almost everything was watered in the cabinet, the humidity went from 45-ish to 75%. Over time, as the soil starts to dry out, the humidity will drop until I water it again. So, a worthy mention. This is an old cabinet and it doesn't seal all the way and that's okay for me. I would much rather prefer for little pockets of air to come in since this is wood and I try to be aware of excess moisture at all times um, and especially with it building up in crevices that I couldn't really reach with the finish like in between the glass panes in the wood. Lastly, I definitely recommend automating your cabinet with a Wi-Fi power strip. Um, Dwayne and I use Wi-Fi plugs for almost anything plant or fish tank related, so it was a no-brainer for us to use this. Um, basically, life happens and it can be super easy to forget to turn on or turn off lights, so we use this to manage our light schedule. We made the beeswax finish in our first greenhouse video. Check out how we originally upcycled this beauty and of course please share this video with anyone interested in plenty good vibe content. Thank you for watching. Peace and love to all.